Hello and welcome to Bottom Line. At a time when there is no real rise in the number of active cases in the region, focus is on the next phase post lockdown as and when that happens. Why that phase is challenging is because thousands of people from the region stranded outside would want to immediately come home. And even though a regulated entry is being mulled, there is certain to be a rush. And why not? Those stranded have been facing multiple problems with a whole lot of them being students. Yes, the times have been testing for them, but the heartening thing is that a lot of good Samaritans have come forward in this hour of crisis to help those from Northeast stranded in parts of the country. For instance, Special Commissioner Delhi Police Robin Hivu has played a pivotal role in this regard, ensuring supply of essentials to thousands from the region stranded in the national capital area and also elsewhere in the country. Not only this, respective units of the students' bodies from the region have also pitched in in this noble cause, playing the crucial role of being a facilitator in this case. Not only this, there are people from the region who have also reached out to others in this time of crisis, along with friends, roommates and family members. So to take this discussion forward, I'll be joined from Delhi by Special Commissioner of Police, Robin Hibu. Also joining me from Delhi are Paloma Datta and Ashwati, uh, who have been running a community kitchen for nearly a month now. From Imphal, from Imphal I'm being joined by Y. Chetan, who is the advisor of Delhi Manipur Students Association. And in a short while from now, I'll also be joined by the General Secretary of uh, the Bangalore Mizo Association and uh, Dr. Sangeeta Datta, psychiatrist, will also join us in the studios in Guwahati. If I can go to Mr. Robin Hebu first. Uh, Mr. Hebu, you, you have been, you have always been in the forefront leading all initiatives to help people from the Northeast in Delhi and NCR. But this time, with your NGO Helping Hands, you have taken it to the next level, sir. You have taken it to the national level. How did you manage to connect the dots in your own words and get things rolling at such a large scale? Look, first of all, when we get uh, so many emergency, uh, careful assistance seeking uh, uh, calls from the back home, from the parents, from the relatives of the people who are stranded in cities beyond Delhi, number one. Number two, we have got so many messages, WhatsApp, even in the email for helping up them through ration and so on and so forth. That has set me thinking, Delhi, we have taken care by our elaborate system. Why not do something for a national level, I mean, in other cities? So that set me thinking. Then there is no way out other than I thought the connecting my fellow batch mat, IAS and IPS. And I could to, uh, discern and search out my batch mat, talk to each and every one, appraise them our problem, that what problem we are having. Uh, number one, like we are not able to avail the, what is called assistance given by the state because most of them are working in unorganized sector. Number two, because of some incident of the uh, coronavirus, uh, what is called word used against uh, us in the, some part of Delhi has created a psychological yes. fear in the mind of our people. As a result, they are not willing to venture out to get even the essential commodities. Third, even if they are able to come out, uh, most of them are not able to speak properly in the, to buy the rations. And port, whatever the uh, state governments are doing in all over the country, many of our this unorganized sector who are working at the lowest rung of the, our society, they are not able to avail it, nor they are not aware of the, what are the uh, schemes for this ration and food and so on and so forth. So that set me thinking and we started this connecting the dot from each state we have either IAS or IPS who have voluntarily I've requested them that please be a facilitator for your state if we, every morning we send a list to them because we receive a list for 24 hours and next morning by 9 a.m. we take out this list and send to the east state-wise and this state, uh, this, uh, I would say, facilitator or nodal officer, they just further request that districts where the rations are being distributed for the day. And because of his intervention, rations are being distributed on the same day. It had already happened in the in the in the Rivari, in Dehradun, Chandigarh, Chennai, Goa, and many other places. So that has acted as a, some kind of you know galvanizing, some kind of a uh, last mile 
connectivity through our this senior IAS and IPS officer. And it has worked very well. And I am in constant touch with uh, um, our, my batchmate. We are having a sometime video conference and uh, trying to reach out to the people from here and there. So that has helped a lot and it is working very well for the last three days. So we have more than <coughs> 1,022 people <coughs> rations have been delivered so, so far. And yeah. we are uh, uh, ready to help it further. So, so Mr. Hebu, Mr. Hebu you, you, you solely used your personal contacts to reach out to all these IAS, IPS officers, some of whom uh, may be your batchmates as well. But how difficult and challenging was it at a time when everyone must be very tied up? How, how difficult was it to, for you to mobilize all this and make it fall into place in these times of crisis, sir? Okay, number one. I believe the theory that if you can identify an officer who has that, that empathetic attitudes for the social worker who has been very approachable, and I, among my batchmates, not all, I've identified those <laughs> officers, that helped me a lot. Because as a batchmate, we were trained together, I know who is what, number one. Number two, this in Delhi, what we have done is that I know it's very difficult to mobilize, but I'm very thankful, you know, Delhi police has been, you know, we are facilitating them, at least in the Delhi, and this Delhi model can be replicated all over the country. And there will be problem, but if you think out the box and try to identify those people who are having the same wavelength, who want to do something for our people, and that has helped me a lot. And there are few even notice IAS and IPS officers who are into this, what is called, into our all India level, like Hage Mamung from Arunachal, Indra Malor from in Goa, Malor from Arunachal in Maharashtra, then uh, Mr. Guite from Rajasthan. So, uh, I mean, just uh, connecting the dot that I feel this still frame is the right, or uh, what is called uh, uh, forum or a right means to channelize, to reach out Absolutely. to the last notice. Absolutely. People in Why North Chetan? Why, Chetan, uh, you are from the Delhi Manipur Students uh, Union. Uh, what, what sort of role do you think student bodies like yours can play in times like these, at least to, be a, to, to become a facilitator and, uh, and uh, you know, come to the aid of those in need of help? We, we are all witness to the kind of work done by Helping Hands under the able leadership of Mr. Robin Hibu. Uh, what do you think organizations, student bodies like yours, influential student bodies like yours can, can do at this point in time uh, to help things? Chetan. Yeah, we can also try our best to help, to facilitate uh, um, the other organizations in Delhi like Helping Hands and fight you are not alone and other NGOs. So um, we are also providing volunteers and um, other providing relief materials. So um, the students, we are also trying to connect the dots on uh, all over the, who are stranded all over India. So we are uh, uh, creating a group those, for those who are stranded, to get, uh, stranded all over the India and uh, who wants to go back and also who are um, uh, like uh, who do not get the uh, essential commodities and materials also so uh, yeah we are also working our best by providing volunteers and providing uh, transport facilities and providing essential commodities in, uh, during these times with other ngos like um, with uh, especially uh, Mr. Robin Hibu, we are also working together with other organizations, other student organizations based in Delhi. Um, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, Paloma Datta, Paloma Datta, you are from Assam, based in Delhi now. Uh, you, along with your friend Ashwati and, and several uh, more of your friends, have been running a community kitchen for almost close to a month now. Paloma, how did it occur to you that uh, you should probably do something like this at this time? Because it's not easy, first of all. It's not easy uh, for, for uh, someone probably uh, not in a position to try and do this but still, against the odds, you people have come together to do something like this. How did it occur to you to, to start to embark on something like this? Yeah, we were inspired by one of Ashwati's friends, Priyanka. She had started something like this. And then uh, we started in a, on a very, very small margin. I mean, we are all salaried people and we thought that we could carry this on on our own. Like, because, you know, when you cook in bulk, we realized that, like, you know, even if you are cooking for uh, 100 meals a day, it comes to around 2,000 rupees at an average. 
So when we started out, we thought we could do this on our own. But soon we started documenting this online. We put up posts on Facebook only for like purposes of documentation and to like tell people that, you know, it was logistically possible for us because we are a group of friends who stay very close to each other. I mean, with social distancing and lockdown rules, it's not possible for everyone. But we stay within a kilometer of each other. There are some seven, eight of us at least. So we could come together and uh, do this logistically. But once we started putting up posts on Facebook, a lot of our friends came forward uh, to help us financially. They wanted to contribute. They said they were feeling very helpless and like, like through us, through our small initiative, they thought that they could also participate in uh, some social well-being. So uh, then they, once the contributions came in, uh, because like I said, like we were only these many people and uh, we people, we could not like cook more than what we were cooking every day. But uh, so we started uh, making these care packages of dry rations. We started in our neighborhood. There are lots of uh, footpath dwellers. There's a jubji very close by. There's a rickshaw stand outside the neighborhood uh, where the rickshawalas are sitting because they don't uh, get too many uh, client, too much clientele anymore. So we started with those people. But uh, so I'll like roll back a little. Ashwati, once she found out, once she once she got inspired by what her friend Priyanka was doing, she uh, connected to the local uh, Thana. And Ashwati can tell you how she went about the... Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead, Ashwati. So, uh, it's basically because when I asked Priyanka, she said she heard about this cop who was doing it on his own uh, its defense colony. And so then I called up the local Thana, which is here, Mukherjee Nagar, and they gave me the number of Pradeep Solanki, who's the cop who has been doing this in the Mukherjee Nagar. He's the public Thani. communication officer. Yes, yeah. public communication officer. So he is the one who has been doing it. So we, I contacted him and then he was like, yeah, by 12 o'clock you have to be ready to do the number of whatever you can contact if you can. So then we are the set of friends who are doing the, I mean, who do like hang out, have, you know, all the time. So, and because of all these lockdown and all, it has not been easy to meet us that often all. So this is a good way to, you know, be in touch, stay connected also and do whatever we can in this condition. So then we started at a very small scale, like Paloma said, started with sandwiches, some puri, some chapati. And then as the number of, uh, I mean, people who wanted to contribute uh, increased, because a lot of people cannot do it because of logistic reasons, because they have parents to take care of or kids to take care of. And all of us are like individuals in that sense without uh, having to do all these things. So then we had a lot of time at our disposal. Um, then this was something that we could do and it was primarily putting up on social media was a means to tell people that even if it's 10 meals that you can cook a day, 10 sandwiches or 10 packets of, you know, extra rice that you can do, it, it's not a lot and it could actually be 10 people who are living in a neighborhood. So, yeah. Yeah, so that's actually a very good idea because not all of us uh, can, you know, uh, possibly feed hundreds every day. That's technically, exactly. practically not possible. But if uh, yeah. as groups, uh, just what you people did as groups, if we can come together and even uh, contribute 10 or 15 meals a day, if, if, if a number of people do that, probably a lot of things are taken care of. Uh, but... Uh, uh, Ashwati, again, initially, what were the challenges that you faced uh, in terms of resources also? Because uh, first, there was a lockdown in place, uh, not easy uh, even to get uh, enough, uh, enough essential items for that. And uh, also financially, as, as, it grew, as it grew, what are the challenges that you still face? So, like one thing is, as Paloma said, our salary people, all of us are working, are privileged enough to be in a job who are not, like, you know, jobs that are not stacking us, that are still, uh, we are, like, our work that we can do from home, uh, so which allows us to continue getting our salaries. And the amount of money that we were spending on a daily basis, vis-a-vis -vis what we were spending earlier was much, much lesser. We were not traveling, which cuts out a lot of communication costs. We were not eating out. We were not socializing. We were not going for movies. So a lot of extra cash. So when we were thinking about that amount of money that is extra for us, we were like, okay, it's not really difficult. Like between the 10 of us, it would be like 2,000 rupees would be like 200 rupees per person. This is something that we can, you know, we can actually, like, it's, it's possible to do it. Uh, but living in the, like, the privilege of living in a city like Delhi is that you, everything is available. There is a way in which a city operates in, in 
spite of all the lockdowns. Uh, you have your sabzis available at Mother Dairy or the local, uh, you know, cart, cart people will bring it. Or the groceries are available. For the initial few days, the online markets were, un- like, the online markets are not working, but then it started working. So, uh, a lot of grocery stuff was taken care of by the local uh, small shops that were around in our colony. But uh, physical, you can also like take on. Yeah, because we have also been living in this neighborhood for, like I said, the logistics worked out for us. So, we have been living in this neighborhood for many years now. So, we know the local grocer. So, even when uh, his shop, like, so in, at least in Delhi recently, they are doing every alternate day shops are open. So even when uh, his shop is officially shut, I can knock on his gate and I can ask him to like, you know, so we have been, so his the jugaad, business has also The Delhi suffered. Jugaad coming, coming to act Completely, here also. Complete, at every level, like, you know, from the kulchawala to the yeah, grocer, the dabbawala. to the dabbawala, everybody, like the Delhi Jugaad has come to our rescue as well. And also like, because uh, the these small grocers are also like suffering, right? Because uh, their shops are shut most, most of the time. So I think uh, giving them business is also, uh, I mean, we, we now that the online, the retail, online retail has opened up, we do some shopping online, but uh, we we try and like use the lower, like the local grocers and the local sabzi walas, the local fruit walas to uh, buy stuff from and also help them ra- like run their business. And like, you know, it's convenient as well. Like I said, I can knock on his door at any time and he will come. Absolutely. And, like, yeah. and, uh, Absolutely. Honestly, it's just to add on to that, it's not possible for people to do this right now without the support of the state machineries in place. Because the moment, because the, the poverty, the hunger is so uh, yes. high at the this scales, point, yeah. we can't just go out and start distributing food. It It is not, I mean, to be to put it very crudely, it is not safe. Absolutely. Distribution so, uh, is, is the major problem. there is a me- yeah. mechanism in place to help you do that, it is much, much more feasible and easier to do that. And it's really possible if people in the neighborhood come together and cook those 10 extra meals uh, in a day, it's really possible for us to not let any single person stay hungry in the city or in the place wherever you're living. Absolutely. Uh, Robin Hebu, uh, well, uh, for the last one month, for the last one month, Helping Hands NGO under your able leadership has been distributing ration and even ensuring cooked food cooked food in certain cases for Northeast students. Uh, how challenging has it been to constantly manage resources? I'm sure a lot of people are coming forward to help, but it's not easy providing for hundreds every day, not easy by any means. Number one, I must uh, credit goes to our, all our uh, volunteers who are sitting 24 into 7 in the control room. Credit goes to all those volunteer donors who are giving essential communities. Of course, they tell us, police vehicle, go and collect it. We make a good report. I mean, it's a good entry of the documentations. And thereafter, we take it properly and give it. And this uh, one is our volunteer from the NGO. Secondly, Delhi police has been all the way out, all out to help the people in distress, not only to the notice, even to other, other people. And our one is Russian distribution. We, so far, we have all gone more than 17,000 people from notice, you know, have been already given a rations. And this second 17, option is 000. now, I have a many, we have a lot of students in Delhi who are either uh, doing coaching in for UPSC or even uh, doctor engineering and banking, so on and so forth. So there are uh, hundred thousands of them are, they were in a PG hostel. So because of this lockdown, so some of the log, PG hostel, they have stopped their uh, mess, I would say, the food uh, supply. So that has, they uh, call us, they say, what can they do for, the, they for them? Because they don't have, even if we give them a ration, they weren't able to cook because they don't have utensils, they don't have a gas. So that sets another challenge for us. Then we already explore from a brainstorming discussion, as I told you, for us, the video, uh, social media is the very effective way. We had a regular video conference through Zoom in the, in the every second day with our, our control room people, with our volunteers, with our donors, with our students, even from Goa and even from Tamil Nadu. So what we do now is that since the, some of the uh, like uh, Gurudwara of the Punjabi in Delhi, they are very, very you know, willing to help us. Then Gurudwara like in uh, Subhash Nagar, they say they will cook food as per requirement of the notice test because uh, there are many people who are offering a free food in all over the country but uh, most of our people that can't eat that 
pull up masalas, food, which we are not able to eat that. Mm -hmm. So as a result, you know, did they seek you to volunteer, they are cooking a food with a less uh, masala, with a little more, you know, with a vegetable. Going out so of their way. So these are the, you know, I would say the, 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 the spark of the uh, people that we have uh, reached out to the, uh, those who are willing to, Samaritan who are willing to not only donate, but also to serve. And <laughs> done, what we have done is that to, uh, to additionally, what I want to tell you, apart from it, 10 vehicles going in different parts of Delhi. We have a two emergency uh, ration distribution team in case of those who are sick, those who are completely helpless, those who are lonely from the northeast. And this food is also being distributed in uh, five places like uh, Munirka, like uh, Salimar Bag, like uh, uh, Karol Bag, and Bukhajinagar, where our students are, you know, uh, going, going, uh, doing a coaching and they are in, in helpless condition because of uh, the closing down of their mess uh, or the, the fooding in, in their PG hostel. So uh, I would say it is a use of technology through social media, uh, identifying the, those people who are willing to help, uh, help to volunteer to our serve the people. Third, it's a great benevolent, you know, uh, reach out by the Delhi police. And fourth, I'm very thankful that now NEC has also <coughs> chipped in for ration distribution and they are also supporting us. So all this has made this program, of course, uh, we have a stock taking every now and then. All this put in together, though it is a very emergency crisis, very, very tedious, strenuous, Absolutely. very, very Absolutely. hard timing. No mean task. If nothing can be more satisfying than feeding your own people Absolutely. who are in hunger. Absolutely. Absolutely. Why, Chetan? Why, Chetan? Uh, if the lockdown does end by May 3rd and if interstate movement is allowed, we're not sure what is going to happen. That will depend on the numbers after all. But if that happens, a whole lot of people would want to uh, come back. Students uh, uh, would, would want to come back to their respective states. But the states may have to allow only a regulated entry because everyone who comes would have to, again, go through a necessary quarantine period. Not possible to put everyone in institutional quarantine, given the numbers. So home quarantine is what... Uh, something will, will, will probably take place. Uh, can student bodies like yours also help in this regulated entry, identify those who need to probably come first, and then also you know, generating awareness at the same time? What role do you think uh, student bodies like yours can play in this? Yeah, uh, that's the challenge that the government will also be facing. Like, um, the country is in the lockdown and um, many, many uh, the flights are not uh, uh, properly working. Then many people will be stranded, and, and they can they cannot come home. So um, a regulated entry would be a challenging task, and a student body like us will be like identifying those who um, have uh, symptoms or, or or not showing symptoms, and we can also like uh, uh, provide volunteers to check uh, proper reg uh, regulation. So uh, the government also needs to check on, on this. And uh, many people other than uh, uh, our student bodies, like other benevolent uh, people, organizations will also, I mean, it, uh, it will be helpful for other organizations to um, bring them back home because Many people outside uh, the Nordic peoples are also facing <coughs> discrimination. So, uh, so uh, it, during these times, they are uh, they feel they feel discriminated. Are you and are they, you uh, are are our student, like, our student like organizations? Uh, why Chetan? Are student organizations like yours also uh, trying to generate awareness about uh, social distancing, physical distancing, uh, quarantine periods, and what all people need to do. Because if there is a movement, there has to be a lot of awareness. Uh, are you also involved because you have a good reach? Of course, of course. Uh, we are also trying our best to provide awareness about uh, uh, physical distancing um, and other uh, precautionary steps to, uh, to fight against this, uh, this deadly virus. Um, yeah, the, go, uh, the, the students, mainly the, who are stranded in, uh, in uh, different parts of India, they are, they are, uh, their request to the government is uh, they want to come back home and they want a way uh, to, uh, uh, to come back home because they feel discriminated and they feel uh, lonely there and they do not have any 
presence, uh, essential communities. Well, as far as as far task. as discrimination is concerned, as long as we have people like Mr. Hebu sitting in Delhi, trust me, that will be under control. I'm sure. So uh, yes, there are other factors. Uh, we will go for a very short break at this moment, uh, Ashwati. Paloma, Mr. Hebu, please hang on. A very short break here. Stay tuned. Welcome back. You're watching Bottom Line. We're discussing the role played by community kitchens and good Samaritans in helping those stranded, those from the region stranded in parts of the country. Uh, if I can go to Paloma Datta and Ashwati in Delhi. Uh, Paloma, these are times when a uh, lot of people are seen using the social media to show off their culinary skills. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, yes, uh, but uh, probably uh, another way to show off your skills in the kitchen is, you know, Feeding the community, feeding you know as many people as you can. So and 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 also you have received a good response in social media. Probably uh, the message can be spread. The, the the good message, the positive message can be spread. Uh, it, yeah, yeah, Paloma, go ahead. No, I mean these are like unprecedented times, so nobody has any idea how to deal with it. Like you know, so. It's um it's amazing whatever people are doing to like cope with this uh, like you know, these times and uh you have a psychologist on the show you said right uh, yes so yes uh, Doctor like Sangeeta Datta her. will be joining us in a it moment would, yeah go ahead it would be interesting to hear her as well so uh what like we I mean obviously there is the uh, good Samaritan angle to this but like personally like all of us who are involved in this project. We are doing this primarily for our own mental health, you know, the focus that it has given us because we spent a couple of weeks in lockdown before we started uh, this uh, cooking every day and we had lost a routine in life. Obviously, we are working from home, but like, you know, you would you'd not be tired enough at night to sleep and then all these like, you know, bad thoughts. I mean, everybody is going through that, I can, I think. So like what? We have started has giving us has given us a lot of like you know it has distracted us from like worrying about our personal problems maybe or where the world is Absolutely. heading in the next few days years whatever so I would be really interested to hear the psychologist as well and yeah. Ashwati has something no to it say. is just to add on to that social media angle because there are a lot of our initiatives going across the country and also in Delhi that we don't necessarily get to hear through social media because the people who are doing it are also people who probably do not use social media that much or do not have the access to a smartphone or pretty pictures or 4G internet to do all of that. So uh, one knows like, you know, the first one, like 10 days, uh, because all of us were also, our organizations had started, uh, made the choice to allow us to work from home before the official lockdown had started, almost a week before the lockdown had started uh, because the situation was becoming grave. Uh, during that time, one was in touch with a few initiatives like that who were actually doing it in their areas. Uh, and that was really nice because, you know, places like Balaswa, Bhavana, which have a lot of uh, re rehabilitation, people who, have a, who were rehabilitated, the colonies, the bastis, who are primarily rat pickers, who are, um, you know, uh, daily wage laborers, who do not have access to uh, uh, the, the money, the excess money that they have once they go on lockdown. They were actually doing some of these initiatives also. So it's not always uh, because people don't show off in social media that one doesn't yeah. like to hear about it. And that's wonderful. Just uh, to we, add on to that we, part. We, we have also been joined by Dr. Sangeeta Datta, psychiatrist. Uh, Dr. Datta, uh, these are... We, we, we also have in the show Paloma and Ashwati who have joined us from Delhi. Paloma, of course, is from Assam. And Ashwati is a friend who have been running along with some other friends, uh, Community Kitchen. So what Paloma and Ashwati are telling us is that, you know, they started with, you know, try to reach, trying to reach out to at least 10 people. That was within uh, their limits. Uh, they're all salaried people. Uh, what they said is that, you know, keeping themselves busy in, 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 in this initiative uh, has also, uh, you know, distracted them from all the worries and stress. Uh, your views on that? Absolutely, it helps, and I must congratulate all of you who are really keeping, you know, who are busy doing such good activities. I would say, 
and uh, as we always know that idle mind is a devil's workshop a lot of people who have been locked down at home they have been telling us in fact i have been talking to them on phone also that uh, we feel very low we feel depressed we have nothing to do and when i advise them that uh, get yourself busy with uh, everything at home they say well we can't keep working at home throughout you know i mean we uh, we, we ultimately feel depressed but for people like them who have who are keeping themselves busy uh, in such social causes it's excellent i would say and apart from that it helps you channelize your energy towards something higher and uh, we have discussed this earlier too like during times of crisis like lockdown is also a severe crisis during times of crisis we, we tend to transcend the mundane and this is one way of transcending our day to day you know the mundane things in life and go beyond and then become you know we are humans of course i am not calling ourselves superhumans but you know we get to uh, actually show the virtues of being a human uh, in such such a situation and i think everyone in their own possible ways within their limitations must show such behavior towards at least you know one or two people if not 10 and i guess if everybody does this it will make a huge difference in this world and uh, why chetan yes uh, in in probably places like delhi or elsewhere uh, the people from the northeast are a close knit community uh, because uh, you know uh, that's how it is uh, back in the states back in the states in the region uh, can't we also initiate uh, similar steps similar measures uh in this case we 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 are doing it in ncr in delhi because uh, you know we feel the need to come to the aid of our people of our uh, fellow citizens uh do you see enough such initiatives also being taken say for instance in manipur in 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 back in northeast do you see that happening also and what role can student bodies play yeah we are also um uh, generating fun here also and try to uh, help those who are stranded in uh, delhi uh, uh, kolkata hyderabad bangalore but uh, the challenging task is that um, those who are stranded in somewhere remote places like uh, dehradun or or chandigarh or not metropolitan cities then we cannot reach them so we are also trying to connect with those student unions in those places and uh, we are generating fun here back at home so that we can um, uh, donate to the uh, to the government's relief fund and also help those um, in providing uh, essential commodities rations uh, and 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 those who uh, who have to pay rent uh, mainly those who are, who have to pay rent and don't have and we are also trying to accommodate uh, those who do not have a place to stay and have to pay rent um, yeah Absolutely. Uh, I just yeah. like to yeah. yeah make a point here. In fact, uh, before the lockdown, before this COVID-19 crisis, all of us psychiatrists, psychologists, we were saying this that people are becoming more and more egocentric. So this egocentricity had led to a lot of psychological disorders also. People were just thinking about themselves. I'm so glad during this times of crisis people are again becoming sociocentric, which is actually the right way to be. People are thinking about their neighbors, their society, other people, people in need. people in distress and people who have something they're trying to share which is i think the right way to be and it also talks about positive mental health paloma paloma this question is specifically for you you are also from the northeast do you personally feel uh, you may choose to answer this or not uh, do you personally feel that those from the northeast may have a reason uh, to feel a bit alienated or feel a bit lonely in say delhi ncr or do you think such times uh, are a thing of the past now personally your personal experience <laughs> Uh I have been in Delhi for too long now like I've been accused of being a Delhi I like you know <laughs> almost but uh, I understand why you're talking I think this would be I mean it has both sides like we come to the big city to seek anonymity as well in a way you know because like uh, like the typical small area I mean yeah that is what is like you know the stereotypical small space uh, boundaries you want to escape those so i think there there are like two sides to this uh, obviously like it, i it does it, like you know add to maybe character building as well and it's very difficult i know that like people from northeast do uh face a lot of discrimination on and especially now with the china connection which is terrible like you know like 
now instead of chinky people are being called coronavirus so i mean yes. that's a whole different problem altogether so obviously i mean yeah i'm i'm sure like there is it's it's it's, a, it's it's going to be yeah. more difficult sangeeta datta it's 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 amazing how people can differentiate even in such uh, uh, crisis times uh, where we need to work together stand together but this has continued and uh, it's 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 uh, happening throughout the country it's it's vice versa everywhere why do you think uh, this has been going on and 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 especially uh, surfaces even in in such times where the least we can do is at least stand united yes uh, discrimination on the basis of race caste religion this has been happening since you know from ages actually and so far the northeastern people are concerned we have always been hearing of incidents where people have been people from the northeast especially students have been victimized for having come from the northeast they have been called names also it is very unfortunate very sad and we call ourselves modern but this is not a sign of being modern at all we need to do away with these primitive i would call them you know primitive belief systems or whatever age old belief systems where people used to think that people from the northeast are basically very backward uh, or they are from the hills etc because now people from the northeast they have actually made uh, progress in you know in different fields and we we have seen that students professionals etc but uh, as you rightly said no varun that this is these are times times of crisis trying times testing times when everybody needs to stand united and the corona virus has actually shown us that we are all insignificant in places like uh, the us or the uk or very developed countries also people who you know countries who talked about power people who thought that who used to boast about different things people who are very egoistic now they are not being able to handle this tiny creature called the corona virus and so it is high time i think nature has shown this to us that we need to do away with our false egos we need to do away with discrimination absolutely what should be our only identity is being a good human being and if we don't realize it now we will never realize it trust me so it's high time we realize this and we live good lives as good human human beings live and let live All right, uh, Mr. Robin Hebu, uh, you have been distributing essentials. Uh, you've been doing this for a month now. Now you have helpline numbers across states and union territories. How many calls, uh, SOSs? How many calls are you receiving per day as of now, especially from Delhi NCR? In initially, from when we start on twenty fifth, twenty uh, fourth evening, we used to get around three to four thousand calls. Now three it is slowly, 000. slowly because we are delivering ration. So now, on an average, from eight hundred to one thousand, we are getting a call. So we are more or less more than sixty thousand call we have received 60, from the, by the calls so only, and from our WhatsApp and other, it's more than a one lakh twenty five thousand SOS uh, through call, through WhatsApp, through SMS, even through the email. One so lakh, and let yeah. me tell you before how do we select we make it a point because uh, there are the demands is too much so we tell through the our uh, ngo through our student leaders through our community leaders through the our what is called uh, pastors and our whatever organization we have it we we have a good connection through social media we tell them it is only mean for those notice stranded people who are either a poor student or who are the notice people who are working in unorganized sector having very lowly low salary in their job and rest of them we request them please do not uh, what is called avail this opportunity so we ask them uh, their identity card uh, the, the, through whatsapp or through mail or then their identity card then we informally verify through the our uh, ngo and community leader from that particular area then once we know yes this girl or boy is working as a, in bpo or in unorganized sector or this boy is a, is a student in the hansraj college or whatever maybe then we prepare a list so we have elaborate system and i'm very happy that many people are now even voluntarily they are now helping us to uh, reach out to the most needy uh, notice like one case in munirka this boy from manipur had no food for last four days oh so he had call us we deliver a food something like that we get it every day now and then we get so many thankful message and i think we are, we may not reach out to everyone but we are leaving no stone unturned so that no Absolutely. notice people stranded in delhi or in other part of the country remain hungry and we will continue to do that and i want to assure all of you 
pray for us. Let us stay back in home. Whatever is possible, if you, those who are watching, our number is 80-11-03-45-69. Again, I repeat, our, where you can send a WhatsApp or a SMS, 80 11 03 Please send your, anyone from all over the country, send yes, us absolutely. here. We will reach out absolutely. to them by any means. Yeah. So, uh, uh, Paloma and Ashwati, you just heard there, you know, they have reached out to, uh, you know, three to 4,000 calls every day in the Helping Hands number. And they have, they have, they've reached out, they've got as many as 1,20,000 calls so far, have wow. attended to close to 60,000. Where there is a will, there is a way. It's not easy for even a Robin Hebu uh, to pull this off without, you know, putting in a lot of effort. And what he has done is that it's not just Delhi NCR. He has reached out to IAS, IPS offices across the country, states and union territories, Amazing, yeah. uh, brought everybody, uh, you know, <laughs> on the same That's page. Awesome. And uh, it's, it's, it's great. So even uh, people like you uh, who have been doing this at... You know, however small scale, it's always a good initiative. But yes, this is motivation. This is motivation that uh, if we try, we can make it bigger. <laughs> yeah, actually, when we started in putting out these posters, this uh, friend from Hyderabad wrote to us and he was like, he wanted to start something similar by himself. He it is contagious too. With his parents. Uh, yeah, he started one by himself there. Yeah. Uh, a couple of students started one in Vijayanagar. And like what the earlier sir was saying, there were a lot of uh, students who didn't have access to kitchen who she saw coming and standing in the queue and, uh, you know, taking the food In the there. community kitchens the community, that the, yeah. uh, the state was providing, yeah. even students were standing in the queue because the hostels were shut. Uh, the messes were shut, not the hostels. So, yeah, continue. No, so, it's just that, but they were willing to help out. So, I think it's, if, the, if the state also figures out a missionary to or a system to involve a lot of such uh, keen people and figure out a system where all of us, because this can continue for how long, one doesn't know. And this is going to continue for how long, one doesn't know. So if there is a system in place which can, uh, you know, seek the support of a lot of volunteers who are Absolutely. available, who are probably uh, willing to do all of these things, because it also is a release, like a mentally, like really um, it relieves the stress, stress for a lot of people. So I think once... The state also figures out that machineries people can also contribute in whatever way they can. Absolutely. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much, Paloma and Ashwati, for joining us uh, from Delhi. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for being on Bottom Line. Uh, why, Chetan? Why, Chetan? My, my, my last question to you. I know you have to go. You're in a hurry. Uh, my last question to you. Uh, well, from your end, from your end, uh, from, from, from your end, you are doing your bit. Have the government authorities have tried to reach out to you uh, to get you involved in what we were just talking, you know, get volunteers in place, uh, you know, to, 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 to pull off? Because it's, it's, it's a big scale thing and the government alone cannot do things. Probably they will need the services of student bodies like yours. Has any authority or, you know, somebody from Manipur Bhavan in Delhi also got in touch any information? Uh, why Chetan? Yeah, yeah. Recently, uh, uh, the resistance commissioner of the Manipur government and the Manipur government has been helping uh, in providing essential items. And uh, the government is also trying best, but the only thing is the effectiveness of such, uh, such work is not yet uh, good. So um, the government needs to take a, a good role in, in participating more uh, in connecting the dots uh, uh, with student volunteers and providing more relief materials because uh, the, the materials were short and many, many students uh, have not yet received uh, the items. So, uh, of course, the government is also taking a part, but the effectiveness of such role is not yet fulfilled. Absolutely. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Y. Chetan, for joining us on Bottom Line. Uh, Sangeeta Datta, you know, uh, as, 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 as uh, shown by these two young people who had joined us from Delhi, that uh, together, if we stand united, a lot can be done. They started something uh, and, uh, and a lot of other people pitched in. You exactly. know, it's, it's contagious. People want to do, you know, it's not that a whole lot of us want to contribute, just that we don't know how where and you know uh, when and, and that's where probably the state machinery comes into play to to provide a platform 
we just need a platform and there are enough Absolutely. people who would want to do things and uh, we'll have access maybe, you never know, even in a country like India with... Uh, absolutely, over, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, it's commendable and I must call them trendsetters also because like you said, it's contagious. Once they have started doing, they are motivating a lot of other people who perhaps wanted to do things but they didn't know how to do, where to do, you know, how to go about things. But now that uh, they have become, you know, the leaders in the process of in in this uh, process so a lot of people will follow them not that everybody would want to do perhaps but uh, there is the saying you know i mean even if you make the uh, difference in the life of one human being that itself is a commendable job that is something which will satisfy you and um, on top of that i would like to say something you know sometimes within ourselves there are a lot of traits qualities which we never realize in life Till we face a crisis situation and this crisis has made people discover themselves to look within, introspect, reflect, etc. And so they have been able to explore Absolutely. themselves and they're good. You know, the virtues have come out. Absolutely. So we have become better human beings Absolutely. and some of them have become trendsetters and others have been following them. Absolutely. I hope more and more people follow them follow their footsteps so that we have a better society and we are in a better surely, position to fight COVID-19. Surely, uh, Mr. Robin Hebu, my, my, my last question before I let you go. There, there had also been a series of racial abuse cases even during the times of this pandemic. We had been discussing this now. I'm sure as far as Delhi is concerned, nobody is going to dare to do that because you are there. Yes, in Delhi, we... Uh, we this is, it's a zero tolerance even before Absolutely. the pandemic also mm -hmm. there is already a standing order procedure there is already a notice a special police unit which is established after killing of Nido Tanya there is a massive sensitization and and under my when I was daughter of we have started special recruitment from the northeast so in Delhi it is it is a very clear-cut order down the line Everybody that no nonsense, no tolerance, zero tolerance for any kind of discrimination in, uh, in, in Delhi. In other parts also, whenever we get such case like today's case in Goa, immediately uh, my, our volunteer from the Goa for helping and saying Mr. this has happened, immediately call up the South Goa SP and we immediately within 3-4 hours it has been woke out that, uh, that uh, uh, the assaulters have been arrested and that that lady is a safe with that our helping hand they are just taking care of her including the rations so wherever it is there it is we chip in as an NGO and even as a personal officer since now I have a very good forum connecting the dot from all over the country so it will be easier now for in future also to address this uh, issue of uh, discriminations in anywhere in the country. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Mr. Robin Hebu, for joining us on Bottom Line. Thank you, sir. Uh, Dr. Sangeeta Datta, uh, even one man can make a difference if, there is, if there is intent. Yes. If there is intent. Yes. And for all those who are stranded outside the state of Assam, this is good news because, you know, they were feeling very lonely and now they know they have created new families. This is not less than a family. When people start feeling for you, when people start, you know, helping you out, etc. What is, what actually happens in a family is being done elsewhere, you know, outside the state. So this is wonderful. And uh, I would like to appeal to everyone that never ever think that if I do this, how does it make a difference? Because I'll not be able to make a huge difference. Every minor difference also counts because if everybody does something, it adds to a huge difference. It's like the droplets of water in the ocean. So if everybody drops one water, also, one drop of water also in the ocean, so we create the whole ocean. Let's think like that. And uh, such moves, such gestures makes me feel so optimistic and so positive. And instead of the depression that people were going through, instead of the stress that people were going through, we see that a lot of positive things have been happening in the society. I hope more positivity grows. And, and, and what we have also seen is that right now, uh, the helping hands, the NGO uh, mm. that Mr. Hebu has been running, you know, the, the, although the, all the, all the uh, you know, functions have been restricted to Delhi and CR, what he has done in the time of this crisis is that he has taken it to all the other states and union territories of the country where yes. they have helpline numbers. And not everybody in those states are from the Northeast. There are people yes. who are pitching in, who are pitching in who have uh, risen to the call, again it shows, again it shows that everybody is willing to help. It's not just about distributing essentials, but even uh, when uh, it, 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 it comes to voicing concerns against things like racism, commun uh, communalism, 
everybody can pitch in. All they need again is a platform. Absolutely. And uh, he, him, he is a role model in the society today. So uh, the trend that he has set, you know, of, of during this lockdown period, I'm sure this is not going to end here. Even when we see better times, after when the lockdown is over, when we actually tied over this crisis called COVID-19, whatever crisis has been caused by the virus, I'm sure these kind of gestures, initiatives will continue. And perhaps, you know, helping each other will turn into a movement, hopefully, someday. It's not just about COVID-19. I'm so glad COVID-19 um, could initiate such a movement in India and also elsewhere in the uh, world also people are helping each other one another so let 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 this gesture continue let these initiatives uh, turn into a movement so that we live in a better world better society and we become better human beings absolutely but as at this moment again uh, the, the the bigger challenge that awaits the region again is that if uh, we have the lockdown uh, and on May 3rd, and if we have the thousands of people coming in, probably here again, uh, NGOs like this, the student bodies, uh, like uh, you know, the, all, all, all the students' unions in the states, uh, they will also have to play a big role because they're the ones in touch with these students who are coming from outside. Uh, they can probably assist the government in also sure. identifying who wants to come, who has sure. to come first yes. and, and uh, sequence things because we cannot have everybody entering at the same time. Absolutely, that needs to be planned properly. I think government, no, NGOs, and I guess every human being, every person living on this planet today, they will need to, you know, be a part of that plan because uh, it needs to be a step-by-step -step plan. You know, we cannot be overwhelmed by too many people coming into the state or to into a region, and that is there. But it reminds me of a old English saying that when one door closes. There are two others that open. But sometimes people just keep looking at the closed door so they don't see the open doors. So even if there are bad times, even if you know there are challenges, there'll be more challenges when people come back to the state, people who are stranded outside. I'm sure there'll be solutions too. And we just need to plan this out properly, uh, have proper strategies and follow the guidelines which have been you know, uh, talked about all the time. The guidelines of lockdown or post lockdown, there'll be newer guidelines. We need to follow everything. We have to follow the do's and don'ts and I'm sure there'll be newer you know, ways, new directions as time passes and I'm sure we'll tide over this crisis. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, what we saw today is that a few dedicated individuals can uh, definitely make a difference. We need to keep this spirit alive. That's a wrap of Bottom Line. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Sangeeta Datta, for joining us.